The third criteria for me is uh, owning a practice. So early on in my career, as I began working in accounting, I have met and I've had mentors who are CPAs who have their own practice and I've always looked up to them and I admire the lifestyle of having their own practice deciding their own hours, uh, taking on clients when they want to and rejecting even sometimes the clients. And so the flexibility with that is that you can start your own practice with a CPA versus a CMA. Uh, most of the time it means you're gonna be working for a big corporation. If I get $1 for every time one of you guys ask me in the comment section below on my preference between the CPA and the CMA certificate, I'll be a very rich man by now. Oh wait, I do get a dollar every time one of you guys ask me a question in the comment section below. Only in the sense that my videos reach more audience, so please go ahead and feel free if you have any question at all as relates to finance or accounting, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. So today's video is on CPA versus CMA license. What are the differences as well as what's best for you for your own career based on what I've seen in the last 10 years as a practicing CPA in New York City? So this video is gonna be three parts. The first part is gonna cover the differences between a CPA and a CMA. So we'll go over the differences such as the location in terms of geography, which one covers more uh, geography between a CPA and a CMA certificate. And then we'll talk about where, which area of accounting can you work with either one of the two certificates and then the flexibility one of the two gives you more uh, flexibility than the other we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about the education requirements so we have education experience and examination requirements we'll talk about those and we'll talk about the pass rate for the cpa and the cma and then we'll cover the career trajectory the career path what, what is the career, the normal or the expected career trajectory for a CPA versus a CMA? And then we'll talk about the average salary at the end. And that's the first part of the video. And then the second part of the video is gonna be covering quickly the topics of the examination because the exam is a big part of the certificate. So we'll talk about which, what are the topics you can expect to see on the exam. And then at the end of the video, this is the most important part of this video, is the four criteria that I'm gonna advise you on, on how to select between a CPA and a CMA certificate. So we'll talk about criteria such as personality what personality type are you Let's talk about uh, moving around are you expecting to be moving around globally and then we'll talk about uh, whether you have dreams of having your own practice that's different right and then we'll talk about uh, what is the end goal for you what are you expected to be expecting to be at the future for example if you want to be a CFO at some point which one of the two certificates is right for you so this is gonna be at the end of the video so this is the topic of today's video and stick around all right, let's talk about the location or the geography coverage, uh, the difference between a CPA and a CMA. So a CPA stands for Certified Public Accountant, while a CMA is, uh, stands for Certified Management Accountant. The CPA license is issued by the State Board of Accountancy in the place where you live, right? So it's very local in nature. It's the state where you are located uh, versus CMA is issued by the Institute of Management Accountants. And this is basically a global uh, organization. So. Here's the difference between the two. The CMA is recognized globally, while the CPA, although you're recognized as someone who knows a lot about accounting, you're someone who's an expert, however, it's not recognized in outside of the US, and in many cases, some states doesn't even recognize the CPA license issued by another state. So in many cases, when you work for in public accounting, especially you work for one CPA firm, if you move to another state, uh, in many cases, you have to seek the CPA equivalent or a CPA, CPA certificate in that state that you're moving to. So in terms of geography coverage, uh, you get much more with the CMA. CMA is recognized globally. So this is the first difference. The second difference here is gonna be on the area of accounting you're gonna be working in. So basically, when you get a CPA license, most of the time you're gonna be working for a CPA firm or a public accounting firm. And the type of work is either gonna be tax or audit. In some cases, it's consulting, but most of the time it's gonna be either tax or audit. Uh, and the reason why these CPA firms want their employees to become CPAs is that th that allows them to be able to sign off on tax returns and sign off on audit reports, right? So this is the advantage of becoming a CPA. Um, after a few years of working in public accounting, a lot of CPAs such as myself will leave the public accounting practice and go work for private companies, right? And so when I left, I became an accountant at a private company and then I worked my way up and then I became a controller. And so most of my time is gonna be spent on accounting research, making sure the financial statements are correct and compliant with uh, US GAAP. And so um, a lot of the time is spent on the financial statements preparation and uh, research into the uh, accounting standards and making sure that we're following them. So this is for a CPA uh, certificate. For a CMA, uh, you're gonna be working for private companies as opposed to uh, public accounting firms. You're gonna be working directly for the private companies or 
uh, sometimes it could be publicly traded companies, uh, you're going to be working with, with management. So you're going to be uh, in the decision making process. You're working most of the time in the FPNA or financial planning and analysis. And so um, this is the difference here. The area of accounting you're going to be working in CPA, most of the time is public accounting, while for a CMA, you're going to be working directly for the company itself. Okay, the third difference here is going to be about flexibility. So with a CPA, the flexibility factor that I'm going to talk about here is that you're going to be able one day, if you want to, to start your own practice. So if you have a CPA, you have an easy way after working for a number of years for a public accounting firm to start your own practice, begin getting some clients, smaller clients at first, and then as you grow the firm, you can hire a few other associates and then begin to grow the firm. So if the flexibility factor for a CPA is that you can start your own practice, right? If this is the kind of thing you want, so this is a big factor. Um, if you get a CMA, the flexibility factor here is that it's global in nature. So with a CMA, you can obtain it in the US, for example, and then work in Europe or somewhere else with the same CMA certificate, right? So the flexibility is different for a CPA uh, versus a CMA. So you got to see which one is important for you. Think down the line, what kind of thing you want to be doing. And if this flexibility factor for starting a practice is important to you, like it is for me, for example, then it is, um, it is a good choice for you to become a CPA. All right, let's talk about the process of becoming a CPA or a CMA. There are certain qualifications and requirements you're gonna have to meet before you can even begin the process. So for a CPA, you need uh, the education requirement is to have either a bachelor's or a master's degree in accounting or a related field. So uh, the thing is, you're gonna have to meet a certain number of hours of study in accounting. So you need to have a certain minimum number of credits in accounting. You will need to check in the state where you're located to find out on their website, what is the minimum number of uh, credits in accounting. And so most of the time, this is only met by either uh, uh, taking your bachelor's in accounting, or maybe if you're gonna do your uh, major in a different field, maybe finance or business administration, then you'll do your master's in accounting after that. So you can have all that required uh, credits for the exam. While for uh, the CMA, that what's required here is a bachelor's degree. You don't really specify uh, what major you need to be in or how many hours you need to have in accounting or finance or whatever you have. Um, it's just a bachelor's degree. That's the requirement for a CMA. Now, for the experience requirements, we are required to have a threshold of experience. So for CPA license, you need to have one or two years of experience depending on the state you're in. Some states required, uh, requires one year of experience. Some states require two years of experience working under the supervision of a CPA. And this sometimes can get tricky because you really need to hunt down and track down your previous boss or maybe your current boss and have him sign off on your experience paperwork. Uh, this can get tricky sometimes, but doable. Uh, but you don't need this uh, experience to sit for the exam. You can get your bachelor's degree, sit for the exam, and then later on you can get your uh, work experience. Uh, for a CMA, it's a two-year experience, but it looks like you need the two years of experience before you can even sit for the exam, right? So this is a little bit different between CPA and CMA. CMA looks like you need to get the two years of experience first before you can sit. Now for the exam itself for the CPA, so for a CPA, the exam is four parts, right? Each one is about four hours. So this is about 16 hours of examination. And the window that you gotta complete this in is 18 months, so a year and a half. Meaning if you take one part and then you, you fail to take the rest of it, so if you succeed in one part of the four and then you don't take the rest of it within 18 months, you lose that part, right? Which doesn't sound fair, but that's the way it works. And it happened to me before where I've uh, passed two sections of it and then waited too long and then those expired so I had to uh, retake him again so this sucks try to avoid that uh, in terms of the CMA certificate uh, you got two parts is only four hours each one so eight hours total examination and you get three years to finish them so that's double the time for the CPA certificate you get much longer time frame to finish up your uh, examination for the CMA well, maybe now you're thinking that the CMA certificate exam is a little bit easier because it's only two parts versus four parts of accounting. But then when you look at the pass rate, the pass rate for the exam for a CPA is 50% or 51%, but then for the CMA is 45%. So a lot of more people fail that exam uh, for the CMA. So the pass rate is important. It just indicates that the CMA exam is not an easy one to pass. It's a little bit more difficult, it looks like, than the CPA exam. In terms of difference in the earning power between a CPA and a CMA, let's look at the average salary. So for a CPA with a couple of years of experience, we're looking at about $70,000 a year in earning, while with a CMA with two years of experience is $90,000 a year. So that's 20,000 more than a CPA. And the reason is CPAs focus more, their work uh, focuses more on compliance. What I mean by that is that if you're a CPA, you're either working in tax 
which is uh, com complying with the tax regulations, or if you're working in audit, you're uh, doing an audit to comply with the requirements of the SEC or whatever other uh, entity is regulating the industry. While for a CMA, your work is uh, mostly strategic rather than compliance, right? So strategic means that you're working either in FP&A or a cert certain managerial position that's focusing on budgeting, forecasting, driving the business. And so uh, by definition, this adds a little bit more value to the business than just compliance. Uh, I'm not trying to put the value down of a CPA because I'm a CPA myself and we are extremely valuable for companies. But I'm just saying that a CMA does a little bit more strategic type work and that usually commands a little bit more pay than a CPA. If you have an accounting job interview coming up soon, I highly recommend looking into my night before the accounting interview guide. I'll leave a link in the description below, but it's a comprehensive guide for all levels of accounting from junior uh, to manager to prepare you for the night before your accounting job interview. All right, part two of this video will focus on the areas you can expect to see on the exams for a CPA and a CMA. So for a CPA, you can expect to see these four topics, FAR, REG, BEC, Audit. FAR stands for uh, Financial Accounting and Reporting. Uh, REG is Regulation, so this is mostly taxes. Uh, BEC, is, I think, stands for Business Economics Concepts. Uh, so this is gonna be more like economics. Uh, and then audit, um, obviously it's audit. So these are the four topics of the CPA examination. In terms of the CMA, you can expect to see uh, the topics uh, such as external financial reporting decisions, uh, planning, budgeting and forecasting, performance management, cost accounting, uh, internal controls, corporate finance, decision analysis, risk management, and investment decisions. Now part three or the final part of this video, and I hope this is the part that you all stuck around for, which is how to decide which one to choose between a CPA and a CMA. So let me tell you the criteria that was important to me when I chose which career trajectory to take, and then you can decide for yourself. So the first one is personality type. And so in my situation, uh, I tend to be more introverted than extroverted. Uh, and so I believe and I feel like if you're more introverted, um, a CPA certificate is gonna be more suited for you because a career trajectory for a CPA involves working with less or a smaller group of people than uh, with a CMA. CMA is more strategic in nature. Uh, you're gonna be working with management. You're gonna be working with all kinds of people around the company in terms of forecasting sales, forecasting costs. Um, and so uh, CMA is gonna be working with, with larger groups of people. And so the first uh, criteria for me is personality type, which is in my case introverted. Therefore, I looked at a CPA certificate. Okay, now the second uh, criteria is moving around. So if you expect to be moving around in the future, like we said at the beginning of the video, a CMA certificate is recognized globally, while CPA is local in nature. CPA is issued by the state board uh, where you are, where you live, and so um, it's more local. With a CMA, if you're expecting in the future to be going from Europe to the US or from US to Europe or APAC or what have you, um, you should be looking at a CMA instead. Okay, now the third criteria for me is uh, owning a practice. So early on in my career, as I began working in accounting, I have met and I've had mentors who are CPAs who have their own practice and I've always looked up to them and I admire the lifestyle of having their own practice, deciding their own hours, uh, taking on clients when they want to and rejecting even sometimes the clients. And so the flexibility with that is that you can start your own practice with a CPA versus a CMA. Uh, most of the time it means you're gonna be working for a big corporation, right? Uh, so uh, this here, the dreams, if you wanna have your own practice, I highly, highly recommend a CPA certificate rather than a CMA. Okay, factor number four or criteria number four here is looking at the future. So I highly encourage you to look at the end goal for yourself. What do you wanna become at the end of your career or toward the end of your career? So for example, if you wanna become a CFO or a chief financial officer, you're most likely you wanna become a CMA or a certified management accountant because with a CMA, the type of work you're gonna be doing is strategic finance with budgeting, forecasting, uh, looking at sales forecasts and things like that. That's the kind of work experience that's gonna get you faster to becoming a CFO. While if your uh, future, if you wanna become in the future is for example like me, having your own practice as a CPA, then obviously a CPA license is gonna be much more suited for you. So look at your end goal, start from the end and work your way backward. That's gonna give you a much easier way uh, to decide between a CPA and a CMA. But at the end, I'll say this, 
Don't overthink it because deciding between a CPA and a CMA certificate is almost like deciding between driving a Mercedes or a BMW, right? With either one of them, you'll succeed. You'll do really well with either one of them. If you put in the hours, you put in the work, uh, you put in, you pay your dues in learning the actual field. So don't spend too much time. Don't get into analysis paralysis and analyzing and overthinking the two. Think, like I said, between uh, start from the end and work backwards. What do you want to be in the future? And then think of which one of them will give you the right work experience to become that that you want to be in the future. Uh, but just don't spend too much time in thinking and spend more time in doing and actually getting the qualifications, getting the work experience and getting all the things that will get you in the right career trajectory. If you like this video, give us a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.